Hello, this is Candace with Happy Catastrophe, and I'm here with another flip through. This was a request from a friend of mine here on the YouTubes, and I had recently shown this at book in my April plans, and someone wanted to see it more in depth. So here we go. This is Into the Wild by Daisy Fletcher, and uh, I just looked her up. She's an actual human being, lives in the UK, Ha, works on commission, has another coloring book called Bertopia, and that one was printed in 2016. This one was 2017. And since then, she's been commissioned to do wine labels and other things. She's won some prestigious awards, but her art style is very odd. So um, here's the back, and here's the ISBN. I found this in a... Um, in a big box craft store called Craft Warehouse here on the West Coast. And it was pretty affordable and I thought it was unusual so I purchased it, but I have not colored in it yet. I've had it for about a year because um, it's just so strange. So let's dive into it. If you go to her website, if you Google Daisy Fletcher, it'll immediately come up, Daisy Fletcher, coloring books, uh, artist, something like that. Click on that, you can find her website. And um, she has all of her artwork there and links on where to find this. You can find this right now on Thriftbooks, on Amazon, um, what have you. So what drew it to me, what, what drew me to this was the, 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 the quality. This is, is matte. It's very heavy cover. It's got the flap. We move in. It's a large book. Um, here's Manic Botanic, which I consider a large coloring book, and this one's even bigger. Um, here's a myth, here's a Kirby, which is going to be fatter by a bit, but not as tall. So see, it's a very tall, long book. All right. So as we begin, the first thing you might notice is that that's the cover page. Um, yes, it was published in 2017. So here's the cover plate. And she says that this is exotic animals in a woodland environment. And she does have in the back a listing, just like the Kirby books, of what the animals and botanicals are. So we'll take a glimpse at that at the end. But so here is what you might notice right off the bat. I'll bring in just a teeny bit more. Is that um, this is, there's not much, there's big backgrounds. But it's on very obviously cream colored paper. The second thing you might notice is that one thing does not look like the other. And, but she is not an AI artist. She takes different styles of art, of her own art, and collages it together. So she loves line art, but she also loves the unexpected. So this makes it strange for coloring, right? Because there's unexpected elements like this. You can't use alcohol markers on this because it will bleed through unless you want to sacrifice the page behind you or the next page. But um, it might be interesting how these look as a potential double page spread because this looks like it was done with paint um, or maybe some sort of sh shading with a lot of shading, maybe a computer program or maybe... Uh, just ink and it, it might be a painted picture that she's rendered now in black and white. That's probably what it is because it looks handmade and it also looks like it's been photoshopped, cut out of another picture and then put into this as a collage. So her vision is unique. Um, I love the line art. Uh, I'm not sure I would do anything with the background just because this cream is so beautiful and I don't know what would look good with it. Um, if you have this book and have done a background, uh, let me know where to find pictures of that because I would love to see, or even if you have this book and have just colored in it, um, what have you done with it? Uh, what have you used? The paper is very smooth and um, so I don't know. Well, there's a tiny bit of tooth, so I'm not sure how colored pencils would work on this. I haven't tried. 
I probably would try a water medium first just because, but these are, these pictures are small enough. I probably could color pencil them, but I would probably try a water medium first um, because I think this paper can handle as long as you were careful. You can see with the sun coming through my window, well, it's not, we don't have sun right now, but the light coming through my window, you can see it's a, it's not thick, thick. Let's see if we can listen to it. But it's definitely, you know, a card stock. Um, interesting, she doesn't, the, these aren't exactly the same, but they're very close. Interesting, you could do them two different ways. I love this one. She uses a lot of surrealism, I think would be the right word to call it. Um, look at this, I, there's some sort of minimalist simplicity and beauty like I don't, I really don't think I would do a background. I think I would do some delicate, beautiful coloring and then just leave it. That's just me. But because these look like, I guess minimalism is the right term for me. They really are aesthetically pleasing to me because they're also very balanced. I like the balancing of it. It reminds me, especially something like this, reminds me of Ikebana, which is the Japanese art of flower arranging, which they often use the triangle um, in the arrangements and just balance. Something's always hot. There's one thing that's the highest and then they kind of go down from there. So she has a lot of that going on and that is very pleasing to my eye. So maybe that's why I like this book so much. I don't think I'm afraid to color in it. I would even use, I'd even use water-based markers on it just to see if I could get a good color in it. Um, definitely, probably pencils are the way to go, but I don't know, I kind of see these as, I don't know, I think markers might work. But I just haven't gotten to it because I haven't quite wrapped my mind around. See, now look at the, balance and the arrangement of this. Again, the classic triangle that you learn about in art school. Um, and by coming over, and then just this, with nothing here. And there's all sorts of theories about where to put a large object in a paper, what quadrant to put it in. And obviously she's had some um, professional education. She's very, I think, classic but also very inventive. And I think there's rhymes to her reason. I don't think these images were just thrown on the paper. I think she very thoughtfully thought about where to put them on the paper. Isn't this neat? I just love looking through this book. The images do go into the middle. I have not broken the spine on this yet. Urgh. They do go in the middle. It wouldn't be too hard to break the spine. I just haven't taken the effort to do it yet because I haven't colored any yet. Look at this. How unusual, right? This hair. And yet, it makes me want to color it. <laughs> I don't know why. There's nothing else on the page. And I'm not compelled to put a background in it either. I just want that rabbit. <laughs> And I, I don't know if I'd even color it at, uh, true to nature. I think I would make it surreal somehow. And then this, this is a different style of line art. Well, maybe it's not. The eyes look very similar. Maybe it's just because she made it look like this guy's got scales. But the rock, the rocks are very different. It's like she painted the rocks and then made them into grayscale and then put them into this collage. Like the leaves and the wolf were maybe together and then the rocks, she slipped behind it. I, I don't know. The way the wolf is standing on the rocks though, it would be hard. I Maybe it was all colored in like this and then she just did the rocks differently. It's interesting. Again, she's got that triangle thing kind of going in here. She's definitely, she's definitely very conscious of placement of images. I loved this one. And again, intricate enough to keep your entertainment entertained, not so intricate that you can't use a variety of things on it or get too bogged down in it. 
detail, you know, big, beautiful enough to make you to feel like this is grown up coloring, but this is a doable. You could do this double page spread in an evening, probably. For me, it would take a couple of days, but um, here's something that's a little more detailed. But how fascinating is this? Can you imagine this rabbit hearing this while it's hiding underneath all of those beautiful flowers? And I love that this isn't solid black. It, it just feels like we have so many coloring books out there where we see the same thing over and over and over and over. It's like they're just copying each other's work. And this feels like she did exactly what she wanted to do. Now, her books are, commi are commissioned. She didn't make these books and then schlep around for a publisher. She was asked to do these books. So she's a well-known artist in her own right. And so it's possible maybe people just liked her art and wanted to, her to put it into coloring. But look at this page. And I would actually do that. I, I can't really describe any more about what, I don't know, it's, I think it's just the minimalism and the simplicity of these pictures. And yet they're beautiful. They're not simplistic in a way that these are, this is for seven year olds. And the fact that the animal is doing something, it may be the only thing on the page, but it's, it's engaged in something. Yeah, this paperwork definitely could handle light water. Isn't that neat? Another one where there's something hiding underneath the ground. And maybe I would be compelled to put something in the background. I don't know though. Stencil or just hints of, if anything, maybe just hints of color around the, the item. Look at the stag up there. Isn't that neat? Just completely different from anything I've ever seen before. In some ways, this reminds me of those new Amazone and, or Amazon and those books that have come out that have been really popular, the French books that have just like, of course this was many years ago. <laughs> this one is one of my favorite images in the whole book. I love, I love the symmetry. I love the placement of everything in this. I love the denseness down here and, it, and it, you know, medium density and then just light density up here. I love how it, it brings your eye up. Um, I love the animals in it. I love everything about this. And of all the images, this would be the only one I would be tempted to put a background in. Just because it feels like, to me, it feels like it needs something in there. It, it, this is the only one that I feel like it does. Like I would want to put some sort of a sky in there. Or hints of a sky or... Hmm. Look at the beautiful, excuse me, look at the beautiful flowers. And things aren't proportionate. I mean, this wolf is not this big to a tree. These flowers are not as big as a wolf's head. I mean, nothing's proportionate. It is surreal. But maybe that's what I like about it. That it's realistic enough to keep it in the adult world, but not so realistic that I wouldn't make this deer pink, you know? I mean, I feel like I could. Because these aren't actual nature settings. These are just... I'd like to have her go through these pages, <laughs> like on a, a video, and tell us what she was thinking when she arranged these pages the way she did. I think I'm more interested in that than in how she drew the animals. Is like, what made her place these things like this? This is another one I really like. I love the plants in this one, the desert plants. The pages are stuck together. Oof. See, again, you're just struck by the, uh, just the, the flow of the picture. And I love this with the butterflies going out, just the flow. She picked just the right plants. And these, this is not a double page spread, but they go together. It's a, that's the other thing I noticed about this book is that 
both pages. It's made to be opened and looked at both pages together, whether it's a double page spread or not. She was very thoughtful in where her images were placed. It's lovely to get a book where an artist has total control like that. That's my lunch. Please hold. All right, thank you for that, giving me that break. Today is a day for cooking, I'm baking bread, making enchiladas. Um, look at that, Lynx. And again, it's just it's like a prickly pear, I think. These desert plants, I just, I don't live in the desert, so I'm fascinated with desert plants. I do love them, I think they're beautiful. And I think one of my first pages in here will be, oh, See, now look, they're just the angle. She just knows how your eye tra naturally travels a page. And it's just really stunning artwork. And then something like this. So she'll have something completely minimal and then something that fills the page, which makes sense that the desert would be stark and minimal and the jungle would be lush and full. I think her images are not just beautiful, I think they invoke an emotion. I think that's what she's going for. She's wanting to not only just say, hey, this is a pretty picture, why don't you color it? But to actually, what do you feel when you look at these images? Here's another one of those weird ones. Let's see, look up close at that Lynx. It's not a picture, it's not AI. She painted this somewhere. I think painted it and then turned it into black and white digitally is, I don't know. And then put it in here so it really stands out and then around with all this line art, including other critters in line art. Interesting, huh? It would be really interesting to see what it looks like colored. And there's that Lynx again. And this face looks just like the face of this one. You know, it's her same artwork. It's just uh, done differently. She's She has dots. It's like she has, it's like she has so many techniques that she knows and loves that she has to put them all together. She can't pick just one. <laughs> Dot shading, grayscale, line art, and then this this strange, almost photorealism. I like how she does fur. It could be fur or it could be scales. Is it a wolf, a fox, or a dragon? <laughs> Mushrooms. Look at these, these are pitcher plants, I think. But isn't that neat? Make the flowers as tall as trees. Throw a horse in there. Yeah, I would be surprised if she drew this all as one picture. Feels to me like she draws elements and then puts them together, arranges them how it pleases her. I think these are called bleeding hearts. I think I learned that from a coloring book. I learned all my botanical knowledge from coloring books. Oh, this is why this one opens funny. Okay, so this is an interesting spread. So here, this is the end, we're getting towards the end. Here's two beetles. And then you open it and bazam! <laughs> wow. Okay, this giant hawk. It's a griffin. It's a griffin. I think these animals, some of the, yeah, because it's got a tail. Yeah, it's got four legs. Yeah, that's, and that's not a, that's not something you'll see in the amongst birch trees. And then here's a deer with wings. So here you have a whole page of mystical creatures, four pages of mystical creatures, and you could definitely do each one of these as a standalone page. There's a unicorn. Can you see that? He's horn. And if you're ever worried about folds like this, just put a light towel over it and iron it on low heat and you can get those folds out. Of course, then you have to fold it back up. Giant mushrooms. And then it folds back up like this. And I love that it's like two stag beetles 
It was like, ooh, bugs, bam! Unicorns and griffins. <laughs> Don't you love it? And then a deer is her last image. And here is where she goes through every single one of the pages and tells you what these animals are. So like um, otters, she said these were otters and this is a clouded leopard that was above looking at a Siamese fighting fish. My light is strange today coming in through the window so I've had to supplement it. Um, yeah, so everything is a real thing. Let's see if she talks about, and she even tells the plants. Like where was the one with the pitcher plants? Here. Um, nope. Plants include thick leaf stone crop, pink stone crop, rebusia, echeveria, and so it could be a pitcher plant. She's using actual Latin names. <laughs> and here, oh, this what I call the stag beetle. She says is a six spotted tiger beetle. But then these are the fantastic creatures. Yes, it was a griffin, a winged fallow deer, and fawn, springbuck, unicorns, and fallow deer. And then all the plants. So pink stone crop, corn flower. So you could look these up on the internet and color them realistically. And then there's the back flap. This wonderful cardstock. So that's the book. If you're interested, I think you can find it almost anywhere. And um, let me know if you have it or if you decide to buy it. And let me know, especially if you've colored in it. I'd love to see pictures because I... I have no idea what would work in this, <laughs> but I'm eager to try. So it's on my plans for either April or May. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Bye.